Today we're going to take a look at some of the differences between home chocolate fountains that are on the market. Now I'm not going to call them out by brand, but by features. I'm going to point out some of the features you should look for when shopping for a home chocolate fountain, as well as some of the features you should avoid. I noticed with this one it was quite in the beginning, and then this happened. Perhaps you've heard some disparaging remarks about home chocolate fountains, like how loud they can be, how hard they are to clean, and how cheaply made they are. Well, just let me say this, all chocolate fountains are not created equally. I'd say not really. Home chocolate fountains can be the life of so many occasions. Halloween parties, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. And the fun of dipping strawberries, bananas, cookies, pretzels, cream puffs, brownies, especially bacon. Bacon is so good dipped in chocolate. Today we're going to put the A-Team up against these three shining stars. Let's get started. Since none of these chocolate fountains have the capability to melt chocolate in the basin, I'm going to microwave it. We will be using Sephra's finest Belgian dark chocolate, giving these fountains the opportunity to be awesome. Sephra chocolate has the perfect amount of cocoa butter to flow through the chocolate fountains without the addition of extra oil. Here's contestant number one. Let's see how it sounds. So I've heated the chocolate in the microwave and we are adding it to chocolate fountain number one. That should do it. Basin does heat up a little bit. Um, Add a little more chocolate. As you can see, it's still pretty loud. Okay, so I let the chocolate fountain sit for a minute to see if it will settle in and fully robe. I think this is another one of the complaints that people have when they purchase chocolate fountains that are not um, quite right is they can't get them to robe properly, which is where the um, chocolate flows over the tears. So I really don't know what else to do to get this chocolate fountain to flow. As you can see, it is a little bit loud. Okay, here we go with chocolate fountain number two. You'll remember this is what it sounded like without chocolate. I'm going to add four cups. And the basins actually do heat, apparently not enough to melt the chocolate, but they are heated. So well, that's good. Oops. So that should be about enough. And that's all it'll hold. So let's see what it sounds like now. Let's see if we can get it to rogue. Sometimes if you turn your fountain on and off, you will burp it and that will take care of some of the air that might be stuck in there. Make sure that the auger is down all the way. Still not sure what to do to get it to rub properly. It's a little bit quieter. I just love this fountain. This is our Select. It's the 16 inch and holds three to four cups of chocolate. It will run on three and holds four and it's just purring away. So I kind of wanted to give you a comparison of the sounds of some of these fountains side by side. And the way that they flow. 
So now let's take a look at fountain number three. I noticed with this one it was quite in the beginning and then this happened. So I'm really sorry to report. Um, I am not able to put chocolate into this fountain because I don't have an auger. Um, that's the little spitty thing that makes the chocolate come to the top. So I don't know what this would have sounded like had we been able to run chocolate in. As you can see, this one is extremely loud. Okay, I have got enough chocolate in this little chocolate fountain and we're gonna turn it on now and see what it sounds like. The heating element is on, turned on in the basin, so the basin is warm. Seems to have a little bit of trouble. Um, but still makes about the same sound. Basin is slightly heated. As I mentioned, the problem with a lot of these fountains is the, um, the basin is not very hot, so the chocolate does not stay warm enough to flow. Here's the final fountain. We're ready to add chocolate to it. Um, to, to be honest, the heating element has been on for about a half an hour and I really, it doesn't feel warm. It feels warmer down here. Um, and down in the bottom of the basin, but not anywhere else. So this is what it sounds like without chocolate. Okay, we've added more chocolate and we are ready to give it a try. Okay, we're gonna try it one more time. I'm not actually sure what the problem is. It is a little quieter, but it is definitely having some trouble um, working. The um, tear set is set firmly down in the pegs. The auger is set down and it is fresh chocolate that's been microwaved on half power. Belgian chocolate, the same as we use in the select over here. And so not real happy with the results here. So here we have our two separate select fountains side by side. One has chocolate in it and one doesn't. Let me show you what the one without chocolate sounds like. And that's why we call it Whisper Quiet. Another aspect of ease of use is setting up your chocolate fountain and of course taking it down when it's time. Sephra has a patented feature called Quick Set Tears. Since it's patented, none of the other fountains have it. Most have tear sets which are welded together, making them almost impossible to clean. Let me show you how easy it is to set up the select fountain. Now the reason these fountains are so noisy is because they are manufactured with a belt-driven gearbox motor, which means the belt turns to move the auger and flow the chocolate up the cylinder. Sephra fountains do not have a belt-driven motor. They have an actual little motor inside, which is why they are so whisper quiet. One more quality aspect of Sephra fountains, which these fountains don't have, is the heated basin. 
easily heat chips or fondue right in the basin with a steady temperature control to keep it flowing throughout your event. So as you can see, I'm multitasking while making this video. We are heating up the dark chocolate here in our Sephra Elite Fountain. It's melting quite nicely. Um, it's probably been in for about, oh, 35 minutes. I usually give my chocolate plenty of time to melt. Um, I added a few more chips. Once it starts melting, you can add more chips and the chips will just melt right in. But I also wanted to show you, this is the Sephra Classic Fountain. It is basically the same fountain without the temperature control pad and without the removable bowl. So in order to assemble it, you simply put the first part of the cylinder on, snap on the second, a quick set tears, boom, boom, back with the auger. We'll just drop the auger in, make sure it clicks on there, and then you'll set the crown on. Okay, let's turn on our Sephra Elite Fountain. The chips have been melting in there for the last hour or so while we've been filming, and we are ready to turn it on. I'm going to burp it. Turn it off, let the air bubbles come out, and see if we can get it to robe. 